Hello everyone and welcome back to the Belgian Beer Brothers channel. I am Cedric here in Antwerp and today we are going to talk about the sixth and second to last beer in our Lindemans wooden gift crate. Um, today we're talking about Faro and Faro isn't just a Lindemans beer, it is in fact um, sort of its own beer style and it is a kind of beer about which uh, a lot can be said, a lot will be said. There's a lot of discussion about the Faro beers. And yeah, let's dive right in. Um, it is again a Lambic beer, uh, a kind of Lambic beer, low in alcohol, 4.5% ABV, 4.2% ABV. And this one is, I believe, 4.5. Yes, it absolutely is. Faro is in fact a uh, Lambic blend to which they add sugar to be exact the good old brown sugar that we use on pancakes here in Belgium or cassonade in French candy sugar And the story goes that um, actually they used lesser quality lambic to be blended and then they cooked some brown sugar in water to make a syrup they added that to the lambic blend or sometimes it is said that they uh, used lower quality beers as well blended that with the lambic blend to make it a bit sweeter a bit less sour a bit less tart and so they balanced out the sweet and sour flavor. Um, of course, with the added sugar, a second fermentation could start. So originally they didn't bottle these beers, but they delivered it in the wooden... Uh, but they delivered it in the wooden kegs they were fermented in. With the extra added sugar, it was also a very energetic beer. And Faro originally had the nickname of the land workers beer or the farmers beer because it was often brewed by farmers, as we saw in all the Heus and Lambic videos. Uh, a lot of farms brewed their own beer, had many breweries uh, on site. So they brewed their own Lambic and later in the year when they were working on the land when they were farming they drank that beer Fado with the added sugar had a lot of extra energy so basically they drank this beer to regain power it's also been said that it was a beer very popular with women and even children because it was low in alcohol very you know very sweet and at first I didn't believe this, but apparently in Mechelen, uh, a city in uh, the province of Antwerp here in Belgium, there was a song, and a, a children's song. When, when they played, they sang Het gaat regenen, het gaat regenen, het gaat regenen dat het giet. And als er geen faro is, dan drinken wij lambic. So it's gonna rain, it's gonna rain, it's gonna pour. And if there's no faro, we'll drink lambic, of course. In Flemish it rhymes that was a children's song so apparently the children did drink Faro and occasionally Lambic now I did just mention that this uh, Faro was made from the lower quality Lambics and of course there's one explanation for that the high quality Lambics were used to blend and make Heurs, Oude Heurs, Oude Krieg um, so yeah, all the expensive beers. And since this was low quality Lambic with sugar and water added, this was also a very cheap beer. Faro is also very present in Belgian folklore. Um, just to give a few examples, apart from the children's song, um, writer Thackeray mentioned it in his uh, novel Vanity Fair, somewhere in the mid-1800s, uh, I believe 
1848. Baudelaire, the French writer, also mentioned it in about 1860, 1864. Um, and there were two, or actually even more writings uh, by Baudelaire found, but two in particular that uh, show he was not a fan of Faro. Of course, we haven't talked about this yet, but we will. But uh, Faro, Lambic, it's all brewed with water of the Zen and with the bacteria and the yeast strains in La Zen, the, the river flowing through Brussels. But in the olden days, rivers um, were actually, yeah, a natural uh, sewer. Just think of uh, the London Thames uh, that w <laughs> that didn't used to be what it is now. Um, so Baudelaire wrote um, in his Pauvre Belgique or Poor Belgium, Faro is tapped from the great latrine de Zen and is full of feces. In that way, the people from Brussels drink their own urine. That was an excerpt from Baudelaire's writings. Uh, I believe a bit later he also wrote in a poem, uh, Opinion sur le Faro, or Opinion about Faro, that it's be a beer that's being drunk twice. And I'll leave the rest of that to your imagination. There's a lot of discussion about Faro, because um, in some writings it dates back to the early or mid 1500s. I believe in 1559 uh, there has been writings about a Faro beer which actually had nothing to do with Faro. It was a beer from I believe Dordrecht in Holland um, and if I recall well it was a blonde beer. Had nothing to do with Faro or Lambic whatsoever but it is being said that Peter Bruegel den Oude, the old Bruegel, uh, the painter, found his inspiration in Lambic and especially in Faro. Of course, that's a nice story, but the earliest writing that I have found about Faro around Brussels is from 1721. And that sounds a bit more uh, plausible. There's also a story that Faro was developed to compete with Coca-Cola because drinks were getting sweeter and beer was getting less popular so they needed something to balance that out and compete with Coca-Cola and then they made Faro a lambic with sugar. Of course uh, Coca-Cola only started in 1893 so I believe this is a easily debunked myth. Um, what else can I tell you about this beer? It was a very popular beer, mainly in the 18th century, or if you like to believe that, from the 1500s up until the late 19th century. Um, late 19th century, meaning uh, the late 1800s, 1890s, early 1900s it lost some popularity and of course in the 19th century the Pilsner beers uh, became a lot bigger uh, mainly here and in the early 1900s uh, except for another world war the rise of the soda pops didn't help so I can understand where the story about coca-cola came from that wasn't the reason why Faro was developed, but it was part of the reason why it went under. Um, also, after the First World War, um, quality and flavor kind of dropped, or are being said to have dropped, because uh, the real raw, unrefined sugar was being replaced by saccharin, and saccharin is a artificial sweetener that's 300 to 500 times sweeter than sugar per calorie. People didn't like the artificial flavor. So again, 
Faro lost its place in the market. It became less and less and less and less popular. People went for the Pilsner beer, which was also a light beer, a 5% ABV, uh, rather bitter, refreshing beer. And Faro almost completely disappeared. Until the 1970s, when, uh, for example, Lindemans, 1978, brought it back. Other producers uh, that still make Faro today are Timmermans, Bohm, and I believe more Subit, uh, of which we all talked in the Jersa series, and we might see them again later on. Another thing about Faro that sparks a lot of discussion is the name. Faro, F-A-R-O, is a city in Portugal. It is a wine city. Um, yeah, it's also the Portuguese word for perfume. Might be that, the, the fruity notes in the, the Faro. It's uh, in Spain, a traditional barley liquor, a sweet barley liquor. And of course, here in Antwerp and in Belgium in general, the Spanish Inquisition was kind of a thing. So maybe the name came from there. They had their barley liquor and we had beer and faro in general, um, the beer of the people, who knows. It's also been said that it is old Flemish or old Dutch because far, F-A-R, was uh, Dutch for wheat. I think about the French farine for flour. And of course in French, eau, water, so wheat, water, faro is another theory. And a fourth theory is about uh, Sire Hugs van Kantersteen, who actually started a contest to make a nice, easy drinking beer. And the winner of that beer, or of that contest, the winning beer, was described as Faro in French. And Faro has uh, several meanings. But it's, amongst others, um, convincing, certain, vain, elegant, but slightly in the more negative way. Um, I only have one problem with that theory. And that is that this story is dated back to 950 AD. So it predates uh, Faro with about 500 to 700 years. Slight problem. We'll never know, or I hope we will know someday, but at least I haven't found it in any writings. Not the writings by Michael Jackson, not the writings by Jeff van der Steen. Believe me, I read many books about this. Haven't found it yet. What else can I tell you about this beer? Well, not much, um, except that it is a very local specialty and so much so that next to Oude Geurs and Oude Krieg, um, Faro has always also been recognized by the European Union as a guaranteed traditional specialty. Yeah. Of course, that means that when you buy a Faro, it has to um, comply within certain rule sets and you will always have the same quality. Now, let's have a taste. This is one of the most classic labels. I actually love this label because I love the combination of black and gray or black and silver. And again, 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 a lovely Faro glass. Um, I have been looking for the history of these glasses and I have not found it until now. You might think that this, and I don't have one near me, but that this kind of looks like a 
here's a glass and you would be right because it's also a white glass with a thick bottom and originally the here's a bottom was so thick because people put in a sugar cube and then stomped it so you have to have a very stable thick base and with Faro the story goes that um, yeah innkeepers soaked tin wires in syrup or in a sugar solution and then put them one of those wires in the glass as well and people scraped it so maybe that's where this glass came from all right let's go smell the tart scent of the lambic here we go look at that color this might surprise you but also a point of a lot of discussion with Faro is uh, for example the color this is a very nice let's say orangey amber copper color and according to some people the color of a faro beer is dark according to others it's amber some say it should be somewhere in the ebc range of 10 to 12 others say it is 20 to 30 um, so yeah it's quite hard to pin it either way it is in my opinion a beautiful beautiful color very clear not very active slightly carbonated and some beige or off-white foam a nice half a centimeter to protect our beer from oxidizing now that we have the aromas in the wide opening uh, it's a lot less tart in aroma and a lot uh, a lot more sweet I actually get some fruity notes, a bit of peach in there, a bit of stone fruit, sugary, a bit tart, a bit woody even. Okay, and let's have a taste. Hmm. tastes exactly as you would expect um, slightly soft and sour tiny bit tart but not aggressive not acidic not um, in your face sour it's more like uh, lactic acids no lemon no vinegar uh, <coughs> It's more like a cola is sour as well. Of course, I do taste the sugar, the unrefined brown sugars. It has a nice balance between the sweet and the sour, as we've seen quite often with the fruit lambics. Um, but this has a rather full mouthfeel of course because of the sugar uh, that sticks in your mouth it feels a lot richer in taste um, yeah well, how can I say this it's also very um, soft and very crisp slightly woody and I'm thinking what foods I would pair with this beer because I my first reflex is to say desserts 
just some simple dessert, a uh, sabayon or a vanilla ice cream. And then this to go with it for the sour side. I would not pair this with fruits, but I would actually love to use this in a, in a stew instead of the heavy dark brown beers. Uh, I'm very curious as to what this would bring to the table, uh, literally in a stew or how about having this with some salty cheeses or with uh, pizza? No, something to think about or rather something to try out. I also like the way you can really grab this glass. It's a, it's a real handful. Honestly, taste wise, the sweet and sour here reminds me of the Flemish brown or Flemish red ales. Uh, I am thinking about Duchesse de Bourgogne. Um, I am thinking about a Rodenbach or Rodenbach Grand Cru. Um, yeah, this reminds me of a sweet version of those beers. So again, something to try out, something to compare. Anywho, I'm gonna leave it at that. I am going to enjoy this a bit further and then go to bed. If you guys like this or you want to know more about it, um, yeah, comment, let me know, ask me any questions, I'll try and answer them. If you like this video and you want to see more, hit the bell icon, subscribe, you'll get notified when I post other videos and I'll see you guys again in a few days for the last and hopefully not least beer in this gift crate, the summer berry i'm very curious about that one cheers you guys